Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am finally, finally doing my review on the Drunk Elephant skincare range. This has been many, many months in the making. It's also kind of a, I guess, skincare routine video from the last few months as well, um, because I do have one or two products that aren't Drunk Elephant that I've been using, but I will mention those obviously as we go. So a quick rundown before we get into things. I have a normal skin type. It does lean a bit combo-y at times. It can get a bit dehydrated, but it's not like super oily or super dry or anything. The biggest skin concerns that I have would be dehydration being one of them as well as hormonal breakouts. I get a lot of hormonal breakouts around my chin area. I basically always have a breakout in this area and the area is quite scarred um, from years and years of hormonal breakouts. And I do occasionally get one like on my hairline or something, probably from hair product and such. But for the most part, my, my cheeks, my nose and my forehead are clear of blemishes. It's usually just in this area that I get them. I know this might not seem relevant for skin skincare video but I also have a very fair complexion. I'm about an MW10 at MAC or NC10 sorry. It is actually relevant to this review because very fair skin shows marks a lot easier. Blemishes um, tend to become more obvious on very fair skin as well as the marks that are left behind. Um, from, in my experience I feel like they take a long time to go away and I think it's because when you're very fair like me you have quite a lot of translucency to your skin so um, that's just something that we also have to deal with. If you do get a blemish it's like really really obvious <laughs> So I have pretty much every product in the range apart from the two newest releases and the two sunscreens. So I don't have the Proteiny Moisturizer, I don't have the very brand new Sea Tango Eye Cream that's only just been released like two weeks ago or something, and I don't have either of the sunscreens. Those four products are not sold in Australia, so if I do want to get my hands on them, I have to somehow order them from the States. Now just a quick recap of my history with the brand. The very first product I ever tried from them was the TLC um, Glycolic night serum. This is a chemical exfoliator so it uses alpha hydroxy and beta hydroxy acids to exfoliate the skin with um, chemicals rather than a physical exfoliation like a scrub and I've been using this product for about a year. About 10 months ago I got my first bottle of the C Firma so this is a vitamin C serum um, and I've, yeah, as I say, I've been using that continuously for 10 months. Not the same bottle, but I've been using that product. And then about eight months ago, I got the Virgin Marula oil. So this is their beauty oil. Those three products I purchased myself from Mecca, that's where you can buy Drunk Elephant in Australia and in the US I believe you've obviously got the Drunk Elephant website and also Sephora stocks it. I don't think it's sold anywhere else besides America, Canada and Australia at this stage. Um, I could be wrong but to my knowledge that is only the places, only places around the world where it's sold. In the UK and I'm pretty sure Europe you can actually order from the US um, Sephora. The remaining products I've been using for about the last three and a half to four months. I was so honored and actually met the owner Tiffany um, and her assistant when they came to Melbourne. They actually contacted me on Instagram and we caught up like privately like we had a glass of wine together and chats and it was so amazing and the only reason they reached out to me is because I'd already shown their brand a lot of love on Instagram like you know obviously unpaid unsponsored nothing I just really genuinely loved their products and I'd done a couple of posts with their wee products and they looked really pretty and they um, wanted to reach out to me and just kind of like yeah chat about why I love the brand and they wanted to share I guess a little bit more about them and it was so nice it was so lovely and intimate to just talk one on one with the brand's owner and founder like that was incredible Tiffany's a gorgeous human and you can tell she has such a passion for skincare and she has such a passion for her brand which I just I loved it was one of the it was a real highlight for me last year meeting her they also sent me at Christmas time like a massive, it actually came in that white box, I've kept the box, uh, but it came stocked full of like pretty much their whole range, as I said, apart from those four products that I mentioned at the beginning. So nearly everything in their range, it was amazing. I was kind of blown away. Now one of the real benefits of the Drunk Elephant range is that the whole range doesn't contain any of these suspicious six as they call it, uh, which are six kind of types of ingredients that can be quite detrimental to your skin's health. The first being being SLS which is sodium laurel sulfate I think that's the one laurel not laureth but um, either way it doesn't contain those kind of harsh sulfates um, they don't contain essential oils they don't contain fragrance they don't contain any drying alcohols they don't contain any silicones and they don't contain any chemical sunscreens so the whole range, every single product doesn't contain any of those ingredients. The philosophy behind the brand is to get your skin to behave as normal as possible, as natural as it can be. They don't believe in skin types. You may come new to the brand with a type of skin type as such, like your skin might feel very dry and sensitized, 
but that's most likely because of the products you're using already and not your natural skin state. Tiffany explained to me that like a lot of people will notice their skin looks so much more healthy and natural when they go completely makeup free, product free, face wash free, just they do nothing to their face for 10 days. For example, if they go into hospital and they have surgery and they've got to like wait around for recovery, obviously you're not gonna be putting on makeup and you're probably not even gonna really wash your face or do a lot with it. Your skin can just go back to its natural state. The acid mantle builds up on the skin again, the natural oil surface barrier is not disrupted and the idea behind the brand is to support your skin's health rather than trying to change it rather than trying to strip the oils from the skin and rather than trying to sort of disguise it with silicones that make it feel nice in the moment make it feel nourished but it's actually going to dry it out in the long run so so the benefit of the brand is like what's not in the products more so than what is in the products there's definitely some beautiful ingredients in the products but the main benefit is that they don't contain any of those inexpensive fillers um, like silicone Silicones are really inexpensive, that's why most brands use them um, because they provide results like that, like you feel moisturized and smoothed skin but it's it's a kind of a fake thing, it's like putting cling film over your skin. I'll have a link to the Drunk Elephant website that explains a little bit more about these ingredients if you're curious. So I think we best get into talking about the products. I definitely have some favorites that I would 100% recommend to you guys and then there are some that I think are not necessarily it's not that they're not necessary but I think you could pass on them if you wanted to save some money because I'm not gonna lie these products are very expensive they're very high-end prices um, but they do work they really deliver results so let's start out with cleansing the first product I have is the bestie number no. nine jelly cleanser um, so this is a facial wash kind of like a gel wash so it does contain some mild cleaning agents but it's nothing harsh as I say no SLS I typically leave this one in my shower because it's a little bit less messy than the other cleansing products I have to talk about, especially in the shower, like it's nice to have it in a bottle. I think all the cleansers I'm going to talk about are all great. Um, I have a preference for one of them and that's just based on my own experience, but I think they all work very well. I would see myself repurchasing this if I decided I liked the gel kind of just squeezy chew bottle idea better. But the cleanser from the range that I typically like best are, is this one, this is the Peaky Bar. These are little facial cleansing bars. This was kind of how the brand got started. I think Tiffany was like making these little bars just from home and like was selling them, I don't know, at markets or something. Um, and it kind of inspired her to come out with a whole range because she was struggling to find other products from other skincare ranges that fitted the bill of her no suspicious six ingredients. I just keep them on this cute little gold soap dish. Um, this one is the Juju Bar, which is an exfoliating bar. And this is the Peaky Bar. I do prefer the Peaky one. As you can see, it's a lot more sort of worn down um, because it's a little bit more sort of gentler. Not that this one's harsh, but I'm just not a big fan of the exfoliating scrubby bits in it. They're very, very mild. Um, the Juju Bar does have very, very mild scrubby pieces. They're not like harsh or anything, but they are there and I just prefer I just prefer this one. This is my own personal preference. These were the small kind of travel size. They come in a duo. They cost $26 Australian for the two or $18 US. But you can buy a full size one, which is quite a lot larger. The full sizes are about this big. And they are $28 US or $40 Australian, which seems a lot, $40 for a bar of soap. But these are special soaps. Don't let your boyfriend wash his hands with them. I've, I've had these since November and I've used them every day. Um, particularly this one I've used every single day. The Juju one I'll use occasionally, um, sort of switching between the Juju and the jelly cleanser in the shower. So I've probably still got another six weeks in there with that one as well. I forgot to mention as well, the jelly cleanser is $49 Australian or $34 USD. Now all of these cleansers, because they don't contain any of those irritating ingredients, they don't strip your skin of its natural acid mantle, they're not harsh, they're not gonna sting your eyes as well, which is especially important. They can remove every trace of makeup on your face. However, I personally prefer to go on with a makeup remover first before I cleanse my face. It's just a personal preference for me. Um, I did check with Tiffany if this product was okay and she thinks it's a good product and it's perfectly fine to remove like eye makeup and lipstick and stuff. And it is the Bioderma. Um, this is just the micellar water. I think micellar water is a pretty safe product to use with this brand um, as long as it's a fragrance free one. I just put some on a little cotton pad and take off my lipstick and my eye makeup especially and kind of just give it a quick wipe around my face just to kind of get the bulk of my makeup off. And then I'll go in with one of the cleansing bars or the Bestie Jelly Cleanser just to clean my skin and get the rest of the makeup off. Um, I just prefer that than rubbing red lipstick around my face with a cleanser. That's just not what I like to do. 
but there have been some times where I'll just jump in the shower with a full face of makeup and I'll wash my face with this and it will get every single trace of makeup off, including eye makeup. It's very, very good. And because it doesn't sting your eyes, like you can use it right over your eyes. It's really great. Just want to point out too, this is the Bestie Number no. 9 Jelly Cleanser. This is the improved formula. They originally had one that was just called Bestie jelly cleanser and it had a different cap that leaked so they changed the packaging the product also had like a not so great pH level and now the pH is 5.9 which is a very safe pH for a cleanser and so yeah it doesn't sting the eyes and, and it's great on the skin then the very next step I'll do is apply a serum so in the morning I use my C firma serum and this is a vitamin C serum it's got 15% ascorbic acid in it this really really helps to fade the marks I get from breakouts on my face and it helps to fade like discolor freckles just kind of like evens out my skin texture and this is one of the products that I would a hundred percent recommend regardless of what skincare range you use currently this is a fantastic product it's an expensive product it's retails for $80 USD or $116 Australian it's not cheap but it lasts a long time I had a bottle that lasted me about five months my original bottle five or six months um, and that was using it every day every morning and I definitely saw results with this I still get breakouts and that is because I wear makeup which are loaded with silicones and I wear you know primers and foundations I'm trying new products every week all my foundations seem to have fragrance in them these days because I wear makeup I'm gonna get breakouts that's just the way it is um, I would need to go completely silicone free fragrance free I'd need to treat my makeup like my skincare to see the best results that's just the reality of it and then I would be out of a job I wouldn't have my YouTube channel anymore <laughs> But the great thing about this product is that when I do get breakouts, this really, really, really helps to fade the marks faster. And I did notice a big difference with it. And it really helps to make my skin look brighter um, and less dull, which is something that when you've got dehydrated skin, that can be a real struggle. The packaging on this one's also great. It's completely sealed until you, you know, twist it and pop it out. So the vitamin C doesn't oxidize. However, you can't store this product for too long because vitamin C only does have a limited shelf life. So they actually, don't produce very many batches of this or sorry they don't produce many um, bottles per batch just to make sure that it's really fresh so it's not gonna be sitting around in Sephora's like storage rooms for a long time so you do want to make sure that when you get this home uh, and you use it it shouldn't be a dark orange color it should be quite a sort of pale yellowy color that's what mine looked like it was very very light almost it was sort of like a clear, slightly pale yellow, um, and that means that it hasn't oxidized. If it starts going really, really orange, it means that it's oxidized, um, and I would take it back to where you bought it from and get them to swap it because that means that the vitamin C is not gonna have any effect. So just be aware of that. Yeah, so this one I would highly recommend. I'd also really recommend this next product, which is the, the serum I use at nighttime. This is the TLC Frambus Glycolic Night Serum. So this is the chemical exfoliant that I was talking about at the beginning. Before this product, I was using the Dr. Dennis Gross Peel Pads. And before that, I was using the Paula's Choice Exfoliants. Um, and I found, I found the Paula's Choice ones really nice, but they're quite mild. Um, they had a 2% BHA, which is a good level for BHA, but their AHA was only like an 8%. And this has a 12%, so this is a lot stronger. And I felt like, because I'd been on those weaker ones for quite some time, my skin was really used to chemical exfoliants, and I kind of wanted that like extra step up. So I love this. I love that it is a blend of AHA and BHA, so I don't have to use two products, because with Paula's Choice, they didn't have a blended option. I'd have to use both. Um, which I like using the BHA because it exfoliates inside the pore whereas the AHA exfoliates the sort of dead skin cells off the surface so I think it's really beneficial to have an AHA and a BHA it has the same packaging as the vitamin C so it's in a twist which keeps it nice and hygienic this is the 30 ml of the TLC this is $90 in America and $134 in Australia they also sell a 50 ml size as well um, which I'm probably gonna get next time because I really like this product. <laughs> and so I use this as a daily product just once a day at night. However, about once a week, I do use this. This is the TLC Sukari Baby Facial. This is a 25% AHA. This is strong, guys. This is so strong. And a 2% BHA. I think it's not safe to use anything higher than 2% for BHA. So that's why it's quite low, but compared to the AHA. So this is a facial treatment that you use once a week, maybe twice if your skin can handle it. But I only find I need to use it once a week. And this does so much for my skin. I use this typically on a Saturday that so that for my filming days I look nice and glowy and radiant because I film on a Sunday. This is so strong that you can definitely feel it tingling and working on the skin. Um, you can only leave it on for 20 minutes and then you wash it off. Uh, it's important to set a timer because I have in the past 
accidentally left like strong exfoliants on my face for too long and then I end up with a chemical burn. So just be aware, set a timer once you put this on, don't let it sit on your skin for more than 20 minutes. Now this is a product that's only available in the US because uh, the US allows an AHA to be sold in such a concentration, whereas in Australia it doesn't. I was kindly gifted this at Christmas time from Drunk Elephant. That's the only reason I have it, um, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to get my hands on it, just like the Proteini or the Two Sunscreens, which have ingredients in them that can't be sold here. But I'm really stoked that I got it because I love it. And when I do finally run out of this, I would be quite keen to somehow source it from the US, um, like get a friend to send it over or something, because I do really, really love it. So after I've applied my serums, I go in with with a hydrator and I don't want to call it a moisturizer because the moisturizer and a hydrator are two different things hydration refers to the water levels in your skin so when you say that your skin is dehydrated like I've mentioned a couple of times I have sometimes dehydrated skin that means that I don't have enough water in my skin when your skin is dry you're lacking oil and that's when you need a moisturizer and a moisturizer is an emollient product so it's got oils in it and it, it, it replenishes the oil layer on your skin to protect it so this is the product that they sell to kind of fill that hydration gap. It's the Be Hydra Intensive Hydration Gel. This is a 50 ml bottle and this retails for $52 in America or $75 in Australia. This I went through quite fast because I used a pump of it in the morning and at night. Um, so it only lasted me say three months. I am going to repurchase this but I just haven't gotten around to it. So in the meantime I've been using just this Clinique Moisture Surge Face Spray. I got a PR package from Clinique about a month ago. I went to an event for them and Everything else in there, Moisture Surge range, has a lot of silicons and things in it, so I didn't want to add those in because um, they might interfere with the Drunk Elephant range, but this appears to not have any silicons in it, and it's fragrance-free like all Clinique products, so I figured this was an okay product to put pop in. I've only used a very small amount of it. I haven't noticed any adverse changes or anything, but I just wanted to let you know that I have been using that for the last like two weeks um, in replacement of this, but I would go back and repurchase this. Now this product was definitely one that I didn't get along with when I first used it. I remember trying it and being like, uh, it doesn't really do much and it kind of evaporates. Like I tried this before I had the marula oil or anything. Uh, I thought it was going to be like the Dr. Dennis Gross Hyaluronic Moisture Cushion. I, at the time I was very much into using these very sort of hydrating gel moisturizers because I thought my skin was breaking out to oils. So I thought a hydration gel, that would be perfect, but it's so lightweight, there's no silicones in it so it doesn't fool your skin into thinking it's moisturized, which at the time when I was very ignorant of these things, felt like it did absolutely nothing and was like, uh. And because simply because if I applied it on its own and didn't put an oil on top it would just simply evaporate away and appear to have done nothing so if you are going to use this you have to layer a moisturizer over it. you can't just use a hydrator on its own but adding this underneath your beauty oil does help to add that water to your skin cells it adds that hydration that your skin needs before you put on the emollient product the next step in my routine is eye cream and I did get sent at around Christmas time the Shaba Complex Eye Serum and this is just a basic kind of moisturizing eye cream um, it claims to tackle the major signs of aging around the eyes including fine lines wrinkles dark circles and puffiness the result is awakened youthful and radiant looking eyes now eye creams I struggle sometimes with eye creams because I don't have problem under eyes really I get a bit dehydrated under there I don't have bad fine lines, I get very, very small lines just starting to appear because I'm only 27, so I don't have bad signs of aging around my eyes. I don't suffer from super dark circles. You know, they're dark enough that I feel like I need to use a bit of concealer under there, but they're not like a real problem for me. So I would pass on the eye cream personally because I feel like it's quite expensive for something that just to me felt like it was just a very light moisturizing eye cream. It was beautiful, there's nothing wrong with it. I just feel like this one retails for $60 in, in America and $88 in Australia and that just feels very expensive for something that's just a little bit hydrating. I don't know, I feel as if I would rather just skip eye cream and bring my face creams up around my eyes. So then we move on to moisturizers and there are two moisturizers in the Drunk Elephant range. So these are the products that will add emollient oils to your skin, not hydration. We have the Virgin Marula facial oil. So this is an oil for your skin and then the Lala Retro Whipped Cream. So as I say, I did purchase the Marula oil myself like last June, um, but then the Lala Retro I got gifted as part of the PR package and I was really, really excited to try this moisturizer because I love these kind of packages. <laughs> They're the ones where the product kind of like, you push it out the top, you can see it, it comes out. It's a very hygienic way to package moisturizer because it means that it's sealed. However, I definitely feel like I am a Virgin Marula girl. I'm not 
It's not that I'm not a fan of the Lala, but it's just felt kind of heavy on my skin. I think it's got six different oils in it, and I just found like when I used it, even though they don't believe in skin types at Drunk Elephant, I just felt like it wasn't right for my skin type. <laughs> Whereas the Marula oil feels a little bit more like a dry oil in the sense that you put it on just a couple of drops after you've done all your other steps and it kind of just absorbs really fast into the skin but your skin feels nourished. Whereas the Lala felt like it sat a little bit more on top of my skin. Even though this goes against what Drunk Elephant's all about, I feel like if you have more of a drier skin type, I would recommend the Lala Retro because it was very nourishing. But it's almost, just for me, it felt a little too nourishing. Um, so I would recommend, if you have more normal to oily skin, I would recommend going with the Virgin Marula. Don't be afraid of oils if you have traditionally oily skin, uh, because it's actually really important to replenish the skin surface oils, especially if you use a cleanser, because it can tend to strip away the natural oil barrier that protects your skin. So I love this product. This was recommended to me originally by a girl at Mecca, um, and I couldn't thank her enough because it really did change my skin. Prior to this, I was only using like hydrating moisturizers like the Dr. Dennis Gross, which I thought was a good moisturizer, but Again, it was one of those ones full of silicones that kind of tricks your skin into thinking it's hydrated and moisturized, but in reality it's not. The hydration in it would evaporate away because I refused to wear a beauty oil on top thinking it would break me out. Now I do feel like some oils are too strong for my skin. Coconut oil, for example, those very heavy comedogenic oils are too heavy for me. I've used them on my skin. I've ended up with big closed comedomes, is that what you call them? The big kind of pimples under the skin. So not all oils are created equal, um, but this marula oil is fantastic. So I use about three drops of this morning and night as the last step before I put on my SPF in the morning. This has helped to balance my skin so, so well. I love it. Now I do just want to point out this is a very expensive product. This retails for $72 in America or $105 in Australia for the 30 ml bottle. They do have a smaller 15 ml bottle size now, which is great because it means you could try maybe the smaller size to see if you like it. Um, oh, and the Lala Retro retails for $60 US and 88 uh, Australian. So this is a little bit cheaper, um, but as I said, I don't think I would repurchase the Lala. It just didn't really, I just felt like it was too heavy on my skin. Uh, with this one, it's one of those products where, yeah, it really doesn't have many ingredients. It's just 100% cold pressed marula oil. And there are many other products on the market for much cheaper that are virtually the same thing. However, I've really done my research and I found some information that states that there is a patented formula with the Drunk Elephant oil in terms of how they press the oil. And it's, so it's one of the most purest ways of pressing it so you get the most antioxidants and the most goodness in the oil compared to any other oil on the market. So two products that say they're 100% marula oil can still be kind of a little bit different. For example, The Ordinary, they have a marula oil that's about seven or eight times less expensive than this, uh, which is a significant amount. That is one of the better, more affordable Marilla oils on the market, but it's still, it doesn't have the patented pressing formula, obviously, of the Drunk Elephant. The other reason I like the Drunk Elephant one is that it's enclosed in a opaque bottle, whereas a lot of Marilla oils are not. Even tinted bottles are not as good as an opaque bottle, just for preserving the antioxidants. And Drunk Elephant is fair trade as well, so it's ethically sourced Marilla oil. For me, that's enough for me to happily repurchase from Drunk Elephant's range. However, I will leave it in your hands as to whether you think it's worth paying the money for this because it is significantly more expensive than other ones around. So I think it's a very personal decision. I just wanted to put out there, I guess, why I would continue to buy this. Then one of the most important parts of your skincare routine is obviously to use the sunscreen. But because I can't get access to the Drunk Elephant sunscreens here in Australia, I couldn't review them for you today and I haven't been obviously able to use them. The sunscreen I'm currently using is the Mecca Cosmetica to Save Face SPF 30 Mineral Gel Cream. This is a mineral-based sunscreen, so it's not a chemical sunscreen. However, I do believe there are silicones in this. It's sort of something I can't really avoid, unfortunately, because you won't believe how hard it is to try and find a mineral-based sunscreen that doesn't have one of the suspicious six in it. Just want to quickly pop in as well with the one last product. This is the Lippy Balm, so that I got sent this at Christmas time. It's a really nice lip balm, but it is a $26 lip balm here in Australia and $18 in the US. Certainly, like nowhere near as expensive as my By Terry Balm de Rose, which is about three times as expensive, but it is just a very small little stick lip balm. It works beautifully, it feels really nice on the lips. Would I repurchase one? Probably not. Um, it doesn't really excite me, but if you do want to make sure your lip balm doesn't include one of these suspicious six ingredients, then, then this does feel good. It's not a bad lip balm, it just 
wasn't something that I personally felt as a necessity. So in closing, I just wanted to talk about my picks. So these were just my top five picks that I would suggest getting from the range if you are interested in it. The first would be the Peaky Bar. I think this is a fantastic cleansing bar. It's one of my favorite cleansers I've ever used. I really love the way it feels on my skin and out of all the cleansers they offer, this was my favorite. I'd also highly recommend the C Firma. Um, I think this serum is fantastic as well as the TLC. The two serums are phenomenal. I think they really stand out in quite saturated fields because of the, the knowledge that's gone into them. You know, the fact that they're in sealed bottles, the fact that the concentration of vitamin C and the pH level of the product is perfect to ensure it works well. Yeah, those two definitely. I would also recommend the Bee Hydra even if it feels a little bit unnecessary and doesn't feel like it does a lot i feel like adding in that hydration level before you put on your moisturizer um, is a very important step and i've noticed it's really helped with my dehydrated skin so i'm very keen to go pick it up again i need to go this week i need to do it i'm missing it in my life and then finally my, as i say my favorite moisturizer was the marula oil i would suggest that one personally over the lala retro that was just my personal experience. I know it's a really pricey brand, but I hope that my experience with it and my um, opinions can kind of help you track down the products within the range that you want to buy, because they do offer quite a few products now, and it's kind of sometimes overwhelming to know which ones you need, because um, you certainly don't need everything in their range. If you enjoyed this video, then don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up for me. It does really help me out. It lets me know if you enjoy these kinds of videos. And until next time, I will see you in my next video. Bye.